1871, a Kansas farm boy named John Riggins arrived in New York and made an immediate impression. The first thing we, we kind of noticed about John was that he was able to grow uh, an afro. Here's this guy coming out of Kansas, a white guy. So all of a sudden, I mean, he's a soul brother, and guys are kind of playing with him in a little different light. Riggins had the look. The question was, did he have the game? Rookie runner John Riggins then rampaged 25 yards to the Kansas City Four. Starts right there with your eyes. Maybe along that line is the instinct. I think to me it's a very physical game. I, you know, I grew up on a farm and we used to get cattle, you know. You know, the cattle will always stay away from you, you know. They're very passive, and, but you know, you get one in a corner and you got a problem. Invariably, a defense would put me in a corner. That's when they had a problem. Most great players agree, football is a head game. And no running back used his head as creatively as John Riggins. It certainly drew attention, but it, but it also made a statement about me, which is, you know, I don't know if I want to mess with that guy. You know, the last guy you ever want to pick on is a crazy guy. I mean, you know, the tough guy, you got a shot because you think he'll think logically. The crazy guy don't know what he's going to do. If you can't see the, the cracks, if you can't find daylight, it's hopeless. Forget about it. it. Starts right there with your eyes. The brunt was borne by Boozer and New York's own Brahma Bull, John Riggins. John Riggins is a magnificent specimen, a 6'2", 230-pound man of marble with speed, the perfect power quick back who will get you five or ten and break one more than occasionally. Riggins had a brilliant season in 72, missing two games, still managing 944 yards. Four short of Snell's club record, 56 short of 1,000. I think Weeb actually, the general manager, sent me a bonus check for $1,000. If I'm not mistaken, my second year had 944 yards, but I missed basically four games. And so he said, you know, it would have been more had you made 1,000 yards. And I thought, really? That was kind of when I started to realize that it wasn't quite exactly what the ancient Greeks had in mind when they invented the Olympics. But Namath measured a 40-yard drive in seven plays, sending John Riggins over right tackle to leave the first period tied 7-7. Seven to seven. From the one, Namath returned to the ground, and his toughest runner, Riggins, who ran over free safety Jake Scott for the touchdown that tied the game seven apiece. With the score of 14 to seven, New York had the ball in their own 38, when John Riggins broke loose for a big game. Riggins' great 40-yard run put the ball on Miami's 14. He was only concerned with cracking the tough Lion defense in a bid to capture a wild-card berth for the playoffs. He chose a bristling running attack, led off by number 44, John Riggins. John Riggins. If there had been stop signs in his birthplace of Centralia, Kansas, a small town of 500 people, John Riggins would probably have run through them. Like Brown and Zonka, Riggins is a battering ram who challenges and punishes a defense. For him, the shortest distance between six points is a straight line, not cross country. Tease the 
the Charger pass rush with a patented inside screen to John Riggins, number 44. John Riggins launched himself into the Colt end zone for his first of two scores. Riggins' size and strength make him invaluable as a fourth receiver for Namath, and his speed complements that of Barkham, Bell, and Castor. Riggins scored twice, once by brutishly outmuscling the purple at the goal line, and then by displaying a nimbleness, surprising a 230-pound back. When Riggins is right in mind and body, there's very little that can stop him. This 37-yard chug gave the Jets a 30-14 last quarter lead. Then the Joe Namath Air Squadron began to warm up on this short scoring pass to number 44, John Riggins. Namath's passes set up two short John Riggins touchdowns and gave the Jets a 27-0 lead before San Diego could get rolling and a 13-yard John Riggins TD slosh. Now Namath turned to a new strategy. The two long tries to Bell had loosened the Colt defense enough to try the ground game again. And with Emerson Boozer out, Namath simply handed the ball to John Riggins. The 230-pound fullback from Kansas ran the ball three consecutive times for huge chunks of yardage through one of the game's greatest ground defenses. In this one series, Riggins carried six times for 43 yards. Today, he gained 87 yards for the entire game to go with his 125-yard game in the season's opener. Two plays later, New York was faced with a third down situation and Riggins got the ball again. This time, the Colts made the big defensive play and stopped the Jets short of the first down. But the man who made it, Rick Bolt, paid the price of dealing head-on with John Riggins. The six-year safety from Michigan had made a great individual defensive play that had taken a knee in the head to go with it. On the play, Roy Hilton got his hand up in Namath's face, but Joe Willie fired a perfect 40-yard strike to set back Riggins, who easily beat Lonnie Hepburn to the goal answering any doubts as to John Riggins' speed. The Jets had tied the score at 13. Sophomore John Riggins voted the Jets' most valuable player, a symphony in strength who with Boozer became the first tandem ever to gain 150 yards each in one game. The Jets' backfield should be solid for years to come. Riggins was a rebel with a personality that was just as outrageous as his hairstyles. And both could change at a moment's notice. <laughs> 